They were the worst, brutal, disgusting terrorist monsters in the world. They just tortured us all the time. So what happened is at half past six in the morning, there was a, the first alarm and Kita and I ran to our little shelter and we didn't even close the window or the door because we were used to it. We, on Kibbutz Kvaraza, have had missiles for more than 20 years. We were in our pajamas, but unfortunately it didn't happen. It seemed like the end of the world. We stepped out of the bomb shelter after two alarms and saw through the window all the missiles from Gaza going all over to Tel Aviv, all over the country. And then I remember looking at Keith and saying something different is happening this time. What we did know is that somebody on the WhatsApp group of Faraza wrote that she can hear noises that we've never heard before and that was the terrorists shooting people. And nobody on the kibbutz told us what to do after the first hour because the person that always tells everybody what to do was killed. She was murdered. And we were sitting there and we heard the shooting come, coming closer and closer. And then the terrorist, the Arabic shouting in Arabic outside and screaming until they started shooting the house. I am lucky to be sitting here and telling you my story because they shot us and they shot Keith. They hit his hand. There's bullets in my house on the floor. One terrorist was sitting next to me with a knife in front of my face and the other was sitting in front of Keith and I with a gun in front of our face. And that's how they took us to Gaza. I was disconnected from my body. I was in a complete and utterly shock while kids said they're gonna take us to Gaza. When we arrived to Gaza, there were so many people waiting for us. Children, babies, older people, everybody was standing, clapping hands, shouting, shooting in, shooting in the air. And they knew we were coming and they were waiting for us. While we were shaking, they were happy. Keith is 65 years old, I'm 63. We were treated like dirt. They were mean and brutal and screaming and shouting and threatening from the minute I arrived in Gaza. We went through Worse and worse and worse, I used to say to myself, prepare yourself, you're going to go through worse. And that's what helped me going through such the hard time that I went through in Gaza, because I was prepared as much as I could be prepared. And we were left there just by ourselves, without food, without water, and without oxygen. And we were there for more than a couple of days, just trying to figure out if we're going to live. And I was so close to be dead because there was no oxygen for us to breathe there. There was nothing that we could do. And there was nothing that we could do to help each other because we couldn't even talk. We were so weak. And I want to tell you that the hardest thing for me in Gaza is when they tortured Keith and when they tortured the girls. And I just had to disconnect my feelings and not feel. I was not allowed to cry. I don't know if Keith is alone. I don't know anything. I don't know if Keith is alive. And I just can't understand how I've been talking about the stories that I went through and the hostages are there. It just seems the cruelest thing in earth to leave human beings with hearts there to die slowly. I was there for 51 days, Keith is there for nearly a year. And I'm sure that all the hostages are lying on the floor on a filthy, dirty mattress and just waiting for the next time to be hit 
to be starved, to be thirsty, to be raped, to be touched, and to be threatened. And that's the situation in Gaza of the hostages. I just know that Keith is in danger because he wanted to show us that he's strong and that he's okay, but he's not strong and he's not okay. I'm begging, I'm begging. I've been begging from the minute I came out. There's hostages that were 80 years old that died slowly because they did not get their medicine. I do not want that for Keith. When I met the first uh, soldier, then I started crying and crying and crying. I couldn't even talk. And when I came home, I couldn't walk because I had to lean on somebody. I was so weak. And since I've come back, I try to be happy for my family, but I'm the saddest person in earth for Keith. And I'm still in Gaza of what Keith is going through, the hostages are going through, and what I went through. I'm still there, and I've been back for 10 months, nearly 10 months.